I wasn't even aware of the Harlem River, um, despite the fact that by the time I discovered it, I'd already been living in New York for seven years. It was a good friend of mine, my friend Pony, does this sort of annual walk of Manhattan. Pony is someone he, he loves to walk, um, and he does these long walks. He's, he's, he literally at one point in time walked from New York to Los Angeles. It took him like six months. Um, but he does these long walks. It's kind of this sort of meditation or this practice for him. and. We did this walk um, that he loves to do, which is from like the very top of Manhattan to the very bottom. And um, I did this with him. And around this time in my life, I knew that I was probably gonna be leaving New York soon. I was almost looking for a sign from the universe. Should I stay in New York or should I, should I leave? Is it time for me to leave? Because New York meant so much to my life and to my young adulthood, you know, it was my adopted home. It's the first time I ever chose for myself. And then the Harlem River itself, which you, you know, as this walk that we were doing, um, that we were on for so long, you know, it, it was it was to our left for you know an hour or so. Um, is this sort of dirty, disgusting river um, that's you know like all rivers that surround New York City? Um, it's just this 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 gross river, and there was something just sort of um, both calming and serene about the the river, but um, also sort of dangerous and, and gritty and, and disgusting. And I loved all of it. Something about that walk sort of solidified in my mind that it was time to, to leave New York, you know. I, I thought to myself, you know, I love this place, it's meant so much to me, but I think it's time to go. Well, it's funny looking at this because there's all this stuff, you know, you sell these albums, but I haven't looked at this. Kevin Moore, solo debut from Kansas City's Kevin Moore, this modern classic is his love letter to New York City. It's very nice. Jeremy from Woods is, we put this record out, and from Woods, probably wrote that. This cover, um, was taken on the Harlem River, obviously, though I guess it could be somewhere else and we just pretended it was that, but it was taken on the Harlem River. My, um, my friend Joyce took this album cover. I used to babysit for her. Um, I babysit her two kids, and um, I kind of call her my second mother. She was kind of like sat out, like laid out on the rocks taking photos of me, and um, she took a whole series of photographs, and I liked this one. It was exactly what I was going for at the time, listening to a lot of, you know, just sort of um, old folk records. I wanted it to be black and white and to sort of sort of look mysterious and um, yeah, to have the river in the background. It's the river. My friend Tim Presley um, has a great band called White Fence. Um, he did the layout. He's an amazing graphic designer, an amazing visual artist. And then um, my friend Hugh, aka H. Hawkline, did the, uh, the, the back layout. He's an amazing artist. There I am, Baby Morbs, 25 years old. This a strapping young buck didn't know what the world had in store for him. Dedicated to the city of New York with love. Yeah, that's it, Harlem River. Recorded live to tape by Rob Barbado and Drew Fisher in Los Angeles, California, February, March, 2013. Great. Great stuff. What's this? This looks like some sort of red edition of vinyl. Red. Cool. Harlem River has been really great to me in terms of, uh, you know, my live show in that it's remained a constant staple. I think it's the only song that I've ever, you know, that I've played for the 10 years that I've been playing live shows. It's a nine minute sprawling song and the whole idea of the song was to sort of emulate the idea of a river, something that just sort of kind of flows and just keeps going. Um, and you can kind of sort of put anything in it, you know, you can drop in any sort of instrumentation and it just kind of work and flow along with the, the, the song. What I like about it is it doesn't exist within like the natural confines of a song. It's not a verse, chorus, verse, chorus sort of song. So, you know, in songs like that, you can change the arrangements and you can do different things live. Um, but because this one is this sort of, you know, long foundation, it's really just, it's just, um, exist as this yeah foundation that we can build anything off of you know it's just two chords really uh played for you know almost 10 minutes and within uh that time frame anything can sort of take place so there can be a saxophone solo or there can be a crazy guitar solo or there can be um you know a drum solo or everything can kind of drop out it could be just the bass and it's been really really fun to explore 
all like the little nooks and crannies of the song live and you know depending on who's in the band at any time um, over the years it's it's taken a lot of different forms and a lot of different shapes you know when Meg was in the band there was a lot of things happening on, on their guitar and you know now that Kochime is in the band and a lot happens with his saxophone and you know different drummers over the years at different things and you know during the oh my god era when um, I had uh, backup singers in my band they were doing this whole thing that sort of felt like funkadelic sometimes I play the song as a solo artist and I, I just I, I loop the song and I, I, I take different guitar solos over over um, you know uh, over the chords yeah it can really just it's, it's sort of like a a zen garden of a song you know it's never it's never quite finished it's never gonna be a perfect way to play the song it's always um, sort of shifting and, and changing its shape and that's part of what makes it so fun to perform live Is it 
Thank you very much. Thank you.